Leave now or I'll throw you. Get back. Police college is all but empty. The students are heading home for two weeks to gain experience with real police on the beat. I think field placement is going to be exciting too. I mean, it's going to, it's going to, you know, open my eyes to a lot of things. And um, I don't know what I'm expecting. I'm just trying to hope for the best, I guess. It's going to be good. It will actually look like we're going to be cops instead of little, little whipping boys that run around and study all day. We'll actually be doing some fun stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to get back home in uh, Newcastle for my placement. Um, hopefully none of the boys are out and about in town. Um, but yeah, get back there, see if it is a job for me. Hopefully it is. I'm looking forward to it. The field placement is the opportunity to go out there and smell and taste and feel what policing really is. And it opens up a whole new dimension to them. It's just, it's reality. Builder Mitch is back in Newcastle, just in time for his younger sister's 16th birthday. With all his training, he's a natural to look after security. And anyone who's not on the list, lethal force. Send them away. Just say <laughs> Move along. Ladies. Hello. Names? Bianca. Bianca. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Erica. Names? Playing bouncer at a birthday party is one thing. Saturday night in Newcastle promises much bigger challenges. Tonight will be brawls, uh, alcohol-related crime, robberies, a lot of underage drinking. It'll be all alcohol-related. <laughs> Mitch has trained to deal with drunks at college. It's good that they have all the role plays down there, but in saying that, it is role plays out here. It's the real deal. Mitch is teamed with officers Chris Blackham and Christian Drummond. Get off the road! As a student, Mitch can't wear a uniform and will only observe. Very good. What are you doing? Nah, uh, I'm having a beer, mate. It's time to go home. That's where we're on our way. Rider. Right we're on our way. Rider. Right I'm going. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Someone said to follow us. Yeah, good night. Jumping. Mate, I'll give you a direction to move on, move on. These blokes are heavily intoxicated. Uh, they're a danger to themselves. They're a danger to the public. I mean, they're uh, aggressive and offensive towards police. Uh, so, who knows what they could get up to. Get a car down here, you know, Christian. Right. Uh, Brock, we're going. Get a car. Brock. Oh, give me my mate, we're going. Brock. No. Nah, we're going. Brock. Don't touch me. Oh, Mr. Oh. Chris moves in to arrest one of the men for repeatedly disregarding a move on order. Stop there, I said, mate. Put your hands behind your back, Mitch. Can we get a cage vehicle down to. Champion, put your hands behind your back. Of, uh, Mitch tries to keep the third man out of harm's way. Off the road, buddy. Up here. Come on. Just have a seat up here, all right? Yeah. Hey, Go. Go, leave now or I'll spray you. No, don't spray me. Leave now or I'll spray you. With the first man resisting arrest, the man Mitch was watching also rushes in. Get back. They were very intoxicated and uh, wouldn't obey police orders. Uh, started swearing at police. One bloke decided to be uh, Mr Tough Guy and fight police, basically, and then uh, tried to keep the other two away, and then they came in, got sprayed. He's all under arrest for offensive, all right? Offensive, It's Mitch's first taste of frontline policing. Yeah, it was full on. I'd hate to cop a full burst of that uh, OC spray. I only got a little bit of spray and my nose is killing me. Um, but yeah, definitely a scary moment. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's not even half of what we're going to be seeing out there. Hairdresser Nina is living in Goldman, near Police College. 
She'll do her field placement here, but first, she's adding to her collection. Mum's not going to be happy. Your Neither mom? is Dad. <laughs> Why do you want to become a policeman or a policewoman? Why do I want to become a policewoman? I've been around in my life, I've, and I, I have to say I've seen a bit of the dark side, and I want to do this to show other young teens out there that, hey, you know what, there is a second chance in life. At Goulburn Police Station, Nina gets her wish to work with kids straight away. We've had a young person uh, that's under 14 um, come into the station and he's actually been arrested for an offence that uh, the police believe that he committed. The boy is accused of smashing a car windscreen. Mum is at her wit's end. Uh, I've got that much stress on me. Right, look, come on. <laughs> um, I have tried everything with these kids. I don't know what to do anymore. The boy is about to face a formal police interview where his story will be put to the test. He's saying he hasn't done it. Yeah. What we're trying to explain to the young bloke is, tell the truth. If you haven't done it, stick to the story. And it may be, there, may, there might be more further investigation that needs to be done. Look, you're trying your best. Yeah. All right, that's only so much you can do. Back at police college, Nina was criticised for being too easygoing. What we might okay. do, buddy, is um, maybe give you a ride home. Good communication skills, I can't fault you on that at all. Okay. However, too friendly? Yep. Has anything been offered? But here, to make Nina's friendly nature breaks the ice. That's my mum bottle feeding me when I was a newborn. Got a picture oh, of you. Really? Yeah, it is, man. Oh, look at that. You know why I got beautiful. that picture? Because look at the way yeah, she's looking out. at me. Yeah. And that, when it, I feel down in my life and I feel like no one cares. Down, that's yeah, right. that's right. I remember that my mum loves me. It, can we? And it's still looking at me. Well, now that they've spat me out. But you can have nothing better than a mother's love. That's it. No one will love you more, mate, Sorry, and mate. that's a promise. Gonna... Do you want a glass of water before we start? No, right, mate. The boy finally agrees to make a statement. He says he was visiting his sister at the time and names witnesses to back him up. OK. OK, so what time were you actually at the flats? What time do we get there? Yeah. About 6.30. And the other people can verify that you were there the yeah. whole time. That's it, just conclude. It's actually opened my eyes a little bit because it is just so hard to, you know, watching the mum break break down like that. You can tell that, um, you know, they've both have a they've both had a hard trot. Yeah. Was it? Be scared of all the boy's story checks out. He's released without charge. <laughs> but look, anything if you have any kind of problem, don't be scared to approach us. Early morning in Lismore on the New South Wales north coast. Surfer Kyle is heading to his field placement. He's hoping for a big day. I just want to see um, jobs that involve like searches and uh, maybe just even if they get, get out their spray and have a squirt, that'd be pretty good to watch. But lesson one for Kyle is expect the unexpected. His first job is accompanying the police superintendent to a local school. Today we're at Trinity Catholic College in Lismore. Um, I've been lucky enough to be invited to the, um, the Anzac Day ceremony. Double knotted my shoelaces up. My shirt's not tucked into my undies, so it's all good. <laughs> Being a good police officer is all about adapting to circumstances. Kyle is doing his best. Richmond Local Area Command, Superintendent Bruce Lyons and police recruit Kyle Windsor. I was up the front of the assembly and there's heaps of little beady eyes looking at me. And um, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty moving being there with all the delegates and um, the superintendent of the station that I could be working at in future was pretty, pretty daunting. He did well. Uh, I had a quiet smile when, when uh, I was saluting and I saw Kyle salute with me. Uh, that was a nice touch. I did the old um, salute, but um, I didn't even know how to do it right. I just did, it, did what everyone else was doing. I didn't want to look like the odd one out, so I threw an arm up. The superintendent said I did all right, so I, sh I should be all right. Back at the station, a man has just been arrested. Come on, mate, jump out. Well, it's more police station. He was pulled over for driving erratically. Right. Yeah, I'm right. You're right. But what police found in his boot surprised even them. 
It's definitely marijuana, you can smell it. <laughs> so it's nearly a kilo, so an ounce being 28 grams, is about 300 bucks on the street here. So it's about 10 grams worth of cannabis. The most innocent looking person could be carrying that much cannabis in their boot. And uh, they're good cops, they're obviously good cops. They've turned up a good find and um, it's got another drug dealer off the street. School leaver Frankie grew up in Fairfield in Sydney's west. There's not much going on this afternoon. It's an area with its share of problems. But even before police college, Frankie wanted to be a cop here. I've lived here my whole life and I'd like to um, do my part to, to keep it safe for, you know, for, for my family and you know, for my kids one day. Frankie's on patrol with officers Mick Walkins and Nathan McDonald. It's a quiet day. Right now, we'll just drive around the, the block there to see if anything sus. Just anything. Just anything catches your eye, Yeah, you just when you... You go along, you see something, you think, oh, that's not right. Yeah. And then you just stop and have a look. Near a local park, Frankie spots something suspicious. Mm -hmm. Lying down, where is? Just uh, behind the bushes there. Lying down behind the bushes? Yeah, black leather jacket. Go back and have a look. Didn't look bad, did he? No, I don't think so. Okay, so there you go. Uh, What's happening? Oh, okay, Where do you, you live? Oh, you're homeless, are you? Can you tell me your name on it, sir? What's that um, thing there you got on your belt? Yeah, that box thing, what's that? Driver's license. A beeper? Oh, fair enough. Fairfield 16. Fairfield 16. Yeah, surname uh, Kilo Alpha Romeo. The radio check soon reveals the man has a history of carrying knives. Leave your bag there for me for the moment. It's a scenario Frankie played out two weeks ago at police college. Hands on the pole. Right. Oh, he's got, got a knife. knife. Is that a knife pouch you got there? No, 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 no knives. Can you show me those pouches, yeah, yeah, if you don't mind? nothing in them. They're all empty. <clears throat> What's in that black pouch, if you don't mind? That's... Just a binoculars. Binoculars? Yeah. What do you do with the binoculars? Watch things. What sort of things do you watch? Uh, the stars. The stars? Yeah. I'll take that utility belt off first, yeah. The tool belt. There's no knives in there? No. Just binoculars? Frankie knows these situations need to be taken seriously. He's just going to give you a quick pat down, OK? Just keep your hands out of your pockets for a sec. He'll just do a quick check. <clears throat> Turns out the man isn't carrying anything illegal, but Mick still is not comfortable leaving him here. I'm going to give you a direction to move on from the park. The reason is the little children that playing around could be intimidated by you. Yes. Okay, yes. so for that reason, we give you a direction yes. to move on out yes. of the Bonnie Big area in the park. Yes. Okay, so head off to your mate's place where you're staying. All right, yes. see you, mate. <clears throat> All right, there you go. He's got a pretty extensive history, including violence and knives and so yeah. forth. Yeah. He also had binoculars. I believe you may have been watching yeah. people. Okay, so you just move him off from the area to stop any further problems. It's different seeing it from the, the, a different perspective because just driving along the streets, you know, just doing your thing, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice these things. But when you see it from, um, from inside the truck, you, you look at everyone a little bit differently. It was good to kind of see how they put everything into practice, everything that I've learned back at the academy. So, um, yeah, it was good. It was good to see. Back in Lismore, Kyle's on night shift. How you going, girls? You all right there? How old are you guys? It's a Saturday, so noise complaints are a certainty. Just after midnight, Kyle's patrol is called to a notorious party house. How he's going? Nothing. Going all right? Good. Do you know who's running this gig here? I'm not sure exactly, Chief. None of you know? No, I'm not. Hello. How are you going? Hi. I want to speak to the person who's running this place. Okay, one minute, please. I will bring you to the hearing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello. How are you? Hello. I think I've spoken to you, you before. before. How are you? Yeah. 
Senior Constable Terry Masters has a quiet word. Turn it down to an acceptable level. Okay. Do you understand that? Do it's that. after midnight now. Okay. I don't want to have to close down your party, but if the problem continues, we will have to because we're often here. Okay. Aren't we? I understand. Right. The music's too loud. It's pissing off the neighbours and. Like, I, I used to party all the time. The cops would come around and shut our parties down. Like, it's just part of the game. It just has to be done. I'm going to give you a 12-hour noise abatement direction. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? No. Please explain. What it means is you have to turn the music down to an acceptable level, mm -hmm. get everybody inside so they're not causing noise out on the street and disrupting their neighbours. Are they? They are. OK. All uh -huh. right. Yeah. So if all of these guys here are part of your party, get them inside, otherwise okay. ask them to leave. OK. All right, thank you. All right, that's reasonable, okay, see isn't it? see you again, Constable. Righto. OK. See ya. With the party showing no signs of winding up, chances are Kyle will be back. It's nearly dawn and Kyle's patrol is back at the warehouse party. Despite a noise abatement order, the music's even louder. This time, police will pull the plug. Do you know Janelle that owns this place? No, I've only just got here. Terry's um, real assertive, he's really calm and just lets them know what they've got to do and um, doesn't raise his voice, which um, shows he's in control. Would you like me to go and make them turn it down now? Off. 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 It's going off and I'm going to be issuing you with an infringement notice for breaching the noise abatement direction I gave you earlier. Okay. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. It's going to be in the mail. What time is it? It's 3.30 in the morning. It's probably even after that. Yeah, it's 10 to 4. 10 to 4. Yeah. Okay, so the music is to be turned off. And if I have to come back again this morning for the music, I'm going to be coming with a warrant and I'm going to come in and take the stereo or whatever's making the noise. All right? Come back to this madhouse that we're at before. Um, there's been another noise complaint about the music. And um, we've just issued them with a ticket for failing to comply with the noise abatement direction. Um, she'll get that in the mail and she'll, yeah, she'll wake up and she'll owe money. Back in Goulburn, Nina is on night shift. There have been several reports of a man walking in front of cars. He appears drunk. Uh, college 28, there's a high female vicinity of Ormond Street and Furnace Street, Goldman. He's, he's walking in, in traffic and... They close on the corner. Cover that radio, thank you. Get off. That guy down the corner there, I think he might be keep going down. That fellow there. Police 28, can you just repeat? Good evening. Good evening. How are you going? I'm all right. <laughs> Had a bit to drink? No. Did you want us to give you a lift home? Uh, Just for your own safety, I I'd rather yeah. take you home. Have you got anyone at home? No, I've got a nobody at the moment, have you? No one? All right. You want me to take me home? Yep, yeah. I'm quite happy to do that. that. You happy with that? I am very happy with that. Because it don't feel like it's been up in the locker tonight? That is a very good decision. I will let you yeah. have your cigarette and we can take you home. Basically, we're going to give him a lift home because uh, we're concerned for his welfare. So, um, yeah, we'd rather give him a lift home than him just hanging out on the streets and, yeah, God knows what could happen. So, yeah, he's just going to finish his cigarette and get in the truck. Are you on medication at the moment? Yeah. Antidepressants? Yeah. i got bipolar. Yeah. What appeared to be a simple case of having a few too many takes a more serious turn. The man reveals he suffers a mental illness and is feeling suicidal. What, what I'll do is you've... You've... You take me home. No, well... I'll be home. I, I, I can't actually take you home at the moment. You've disclosed to me that you are depressed and you want to die and you've actually jumped out onto the road. Um, now, it's my responsibility. I'll, I'll have to call an ambulance. I'm quite concerned about your safety and I'm not willing to leave you alone. You need assistance, someone to help you out, all right? In circumstances like this, police have no choice. The man must be taken to hospital for assessment. Good evening. There you go. It's hard. It's hard having a mental problem. It's hard, it's hard having a mental problem. It's hard having a missus that thinks everything's all right. And... He was fairly compliant. I mean, he mentioned self-harm, but... 
every so often. People have so bad as days. Soon as, he did, as soon as he does that, you have to, you know, you've got the duty of care no matter what. Yeah, as soon as he mentions yeah. self-harm. And he's intoxicated, so if he goes back and does something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're responsible for it. All right. So I'll just go up to the hospital now. The man is admitted into care. And for once, police get a thank you of sorts. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Do you know when it was the last time I got flour? A flower of a guy? <laughs> Probably it was about eight years ago. So That's pretty bad. Beautiful isn't it? women should always have flowers. Oh, you just where did you come from? We need more men like you. I wanna serve these people the best way I can. I wanna help people change their lives. Yeah, it was good to deal with that because I've got no doubt in my stomach at all about what I want to do. You know, there was, today's just made me want to do it even more and it's made me want to push myself even more. It's that day I'll get to session two is, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it, I'm going to graduate. This is what I want to do. I want to wear that uniform. Next time on Recruits. <laughs> a city boy discovers the challenges of country policing. Is it Graham? Is Graham your name? He sees the dark side of the bush. Threat's been made to her, saying that she's going to kill her. And the students return to police college. It is game on.